Rain Access Solutions. Hi, I'm Glenn of Rain Access Solutions. Welcome to my vlog. Welcome also to my C Sharp .NET tutorials for beginners. For this episode, we will learn how to use the if control flow statement. Let's begin. Let's create a form in our C Sharp Visual Studio. And this will be lesson number nine. Always use the .NET.80 or the latest version for its long-term support. For this tutorial, I'm going to rename this form Lesson 8 or FRM Lesson 8. Let's go ahead and change its name to FRM Lesson 8 and the form's text to Lesson 8. We will also add two text boxes for our user to enter two variables to compare using the if control flow statement and a button to execute the comparison. Let's add a label. And change the text of the label to label one to sorry number um, input one and input two. Copy that. Select and copy. Selecting a label in Visual Studio form involves only highlighting the control and pressing Control C and Control V on the keyboard to copy. Let's change its text to input 2 and change the text display for the button to evaluate. So this button here will be used to evaluate the values of these two under the if condition testing. Change the name of the text box 1 to txt input 1 and that goes the same for text box number 2 change it to input 2 all right now that we have two text boxes we can now go ahead and test the if command actually if is not a command but rather it is a control flow statement what is a control flow statement it is used to determine the direction or flow of program execution based on certain conditions. Let's see how we can do that. Double click on the command button and let's evaluate the values of text 1, this and this. We will use the control flow statement if. Okay, the condition that you can use inside the if can be so many things, but we will try and use integers or numbers and strings for this lesson. Let's go ahead and try the number first. Right, so here I'm just comparing the values of input 1 and input 2, these two text boxes. If the user entered a number on both text boxes, I will evaluate it by finding out whether the first input is less than the second input. And if that condition is true, we should, we should have something to inform the user input 1 is less than
Okay. Let's run the code. Actually, let's just set this form first to appear in the middle of the screen instead of in the left side. Change the start position to center screen and run the code. All right. Let's try and put one and two and evaluate. It says input one is less than input two, which is two. Let's try it again and change it to five and seven. Input five, input one, five is less than input two, seven. We can actually make this clearer by adding an equal sign here. And run again. Let's put 14 and 20. So input 1 is equal to 14 is less than input 2 which is 20. If we put 20 and reverse the values, it doesn't show anything. So what we're going to do is we are going to add the otherwise. As I mentioned earlier, the control flow statement if is used to control statements or the direction or flow of the program execution based on certain conditions. So if this condition is met, this one will be executed, this line. If this condition is not met, therefore we're going to create the else statement. It is an option in the control flow statement if that if you do not meet this condition, you should at least show another option for the user to see. So in this case, I'm going to show this and just reverse it. So here, I'm saying that it only means that the input 2 is either greater than input 1 or equal to it. Let's run. Let's put 8 and 14. Okay, in order for us to see which line is being executed, we can go back to our previous lesson called adding a breakpoint. So here we're going to add two breakpoints in our code. Okay, for this line and this line. So we can see where the program executions will post. Run again. And let's put four and seven. Let's click evaluate. Okay, now the arrow is pointing at the first block, at the first block of code, which means that text one is still less than input number two. All right. Okay, so how about if we change the value to greater? If the input one is greater than the input two, let's try. Okay, now. The arrow is pointing at the second breakpoint. This means that the input 1 is greater than the input 2. We want to know what will happen if these two are of equal value. Let's say 5 and 5. It's still going to this second block of code. That's because the condition is not met in the first if um, statement. Now, if we put the equal here, so what we're doing here is we are now dropping whether the first input is less than or equal than the second input. Let's see which um, code block will be executed after this condition is met or evaluated. Let's put 4 and 5. Okay, the first line is evaluated if the input 1 is lower than input 2. Let's go ahead and run again. Let's put 
this one will be six and this oh sorry this one is seven and this is six now it executed the second block of code that's because the first input is greater than the second input how about we try and put the same number run it five and five evaluate okay now it is running the first code block that's because both input 1 and input 2 have the same number 5 and they are equal. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we modify this um, code block number 2 and add if. Another if statement. So, I want to put here a... Okay, five. If the input one and input two is the same, then we will execute the first count block. But if the input one is equal to five, then we will execute the second code block. Let's run. Let's put five and five and then evaluate. Notice that it only runs the first one. This is what we call the short circuiting or conditional branching. Short circuiting means when the first if condition, this line here, is true. It is true because input 1 is 5 and input 2 is also 5, which means they are either less than or equal so that means that the first if condition is true okay the next thing is that short circuiting means um the subsequent or any other following else if or if condition will be ignored or will be skipped this behavior is known as the short circuiting okay guys that's it for today's video i hope you guys learned something from my tutorial if you find this video useful, please subscribe to my channel, leave your comments in the comment section below. Thank you very much for watching. Have a nice day everyone. Goodbye.